Hi, this is the third part of basic accounting knowledge course. In this part, we will talk about basic concept and structure of balance sheet. We will talk about the content of the balance sheet. So simply, we are going to discuss about the assets, liabilities, and owner, owner's equity. And then later on, we are going to be talking about some basic analysis to read the balance sheet in a correct way. There are three major financial statements that we are using. These are balance sheet, income statement, and statement of cash flows. So in here, we are going to discuss about balance sheet. Balance sheet describes where the enterprise is spent at a specific day. So we are, well, the balance sheet is not a financial statement that is covering a period of time, but instead it is showing us assets and liabilities at a certain date. In the previous part, I briefly introduced you this uh, basic accounting equation, which is the basic principle in accounting. And it is simply the fundamental element of the balance sheet. So in the accounting equation, assets are always equal to liabilities plus equity. For example, if you start a business with your own money, only your own money, then your assets will be, for example, you have some cash, let's say uh, $10,000. So this cash will be your asset. And on the other hand, as owner, equity will be your right in the uh, company. So equity will be 10,000 as well. Then depending on how you will be uh, managing this money, of course, these amounts might be changing. However, this equation will be always the same. And also, one important thing is this. If you start your own business, let's say you have $10,000, and also you get some, let's say, uh, 2000 from your parents. Uh, and, well, would you count it as a liability or not, this $2,000 that you borrowed from your parents? Simply not, because you borrowed as a person. So this is your personal debt. This is not about the business. However, after you form the business, if you get some bank loan under the name of your business, then it is going to be a liability. Or if you purchase some inventory from a, a supplier with some credit terms, then the money that you owe, you owe to the supplier will be your liability as well. This is a very common example, a basic example of a balance sheet. So as you see on the left side, we have assets. On the right side, we have liabilities and owner's equity. So on the left, we have the assets simply. We have cash, not receivable, account receivable, some supplies, land, building, office equipment. If you see this sequence, is actually from the most liquid one to the last liquid one. So simply the most liquid assets that we can have is cash. Then it's not receivable, so we can convert it to cash easily. This is how we are identifying the liquidity. Uh, and accounts receivable, then supplies, we are expecting to sell them maybe. And then land, building, office equipment, and so on. On the other hand, liabilities, are in an order from the current one to the last current one. Well, the, the ones due earlier will be shown at the top. So under liabilities, we have owner's equity. So simply this total is equal to the total of assets. And owners, under owner's equity, as you see, there is capital stock. So this is simply the money that we put inside the business to form it at the beginning. Plus retain earning. Retain earning refers to the income that you had in the previous accounting periods. And if you don't, uh, well, get the money for your personal use and keep it inside the business to improve your management, for example, well, to purchase a new machine for the business, then we call it retain earning.
The assets are economic resources that we have, and we expect them to provide some future cash flow flows. So, well, that's why we have, for example, building. So we are going to be running the operations in that building and office equipment. So these are helping us to manage the business. We have account receivables. Account receivables is an account that we use for uh, credit sales. So simply if you sell or with credit terms, the money that you will be receiving in the future will be shown under account receivables. Liabilities are the debts that represent negative future cash flow. So simply we are supposed to make these payments in the future. And these are the liabilities that we have. It might be notes payable if you sign any notes for some future uh, contract. Accounts payable and as a reverse side of accounts receivable, this is an account that we use when we purchase something on account, meaning that we have we purchased something, but we haven't made the payment yet. The payment will be made in the future. And then under that, well, as I said before, we have the capital stock, which is the initial investment that you put inside the company. Then retained earning, which is the net income that you had from the previous years and didn't uh, spend it for your on own personal life but instead you kept the money inside the business so a owner's equity simply is the representing the owner's claims to the assets of the business meaning that so as i said in the first part business is a separate entity from its owners that's why we need uh, to also uh, have some claims on the balance sheet so even in the financial statements of the business there is a special account representing our own right as person and uh, well after we see for example in here well how we can read this actually for example if you have couple of companies balance sheet in front of us how these numbers are going to make sense to us. The first thing is that you need to evaluate every company in its own industry. So because a manufacturing company and, and service business are not going to be uh, similar in terms of their balance sheet because in manufacturing company, you can expect them to have some machines, some buildings, uh, so they're going to be having a lot of non-current assets. On the other hand, for example, an accounting firm, they know they don't need any type of machine. They don't need a building. They don't need huge factories. All they need an office that they can rent. And then they need some computers, that's it. So if you're evaluating a business, you need to compare them to industry, their industry averages, not to something else, not to different businesses. And also, when we talk about the balance sheet, so simply we have the assets, and on the other side, on the right side, we have liabilities and owner's equity. So the most common uh, analysis that we can run on the uh, on balance sheet is that if the company is going to be able to pay its debt or not in the future, because we have the liabilities and we don't know uh, the due date for the liabilities and we have some account receivable maybe some inventory to sell later on but we need to make sure that our assets will be covering liabilities you can assume that okay well assets are equal to liabilities plus owner's equity anyway so we can cover all of the liabilities but it is not the case usually for example first of all if you have a business would you prefer to um afford the assets with your own money or with a loan so probably you would prefer to use your own money so the capital this is the same thing we expect the companies to uh, use their capital or owner's equity to fund the assets not the liabilities too much 
But of course, it doesn't mean that the companies shouldn't have any type of liabilities at all. Of course, they are going to have liabilities. But we need to measure if the company is going to be able to pay the liabilities on their due date. To measure this, we have a couple of things to analyze. The first, well, usually we are using ratios to uh, analyze these capabilities. The first one is current ratio. Simply, we are dividing current assets by current liabilities. It is actually measuring that if anything happens, it, well, let's say something happens and you need to immediately pay all of your current liabilities, then you have enough current assets to pay them back or you need to sell some non-current assets like building, like machines. Nobody prefers to sell the machines or uh, permanent investment to pay the debt. Another one, uh, usually we uh, expect the current ratio to be around two. So current asset should be uh, two times larger than current liability then we would think that, okay, this company is going to be successful enough to pay the current debt. Another ratio that we can use is quick ratio. It is exactly the same thing as current ratio, but with only one single difference. We simply deduct the inventory from current assets, then we divide it by current liabilities. Our aim to do this is... Uh, well, simply what happen if we cannot convert the inventory easily to cash to pay the current debt? In that case, that's why actually we are deducting inventory from current assets. So we can have only cash and cash equivalents like account receivables, like not receivables. And then we are going to make sure that we are going to be covering the current liabilities. We expect the current ratio to be around 1. So at this one time, we should be able to pay the current debt immediately. And another one is how we are successfully managing our credit sales. So of course, well, depending on the industry, we can sell the uh, well, uh, we can sell our products on account with some credit terms. But how we are going to be make sure how we are going to make sure that how successful we are in terms of collecting the cash from our customers. Then there is another ratio in, well, actually, this is the turnover. Simply, we divide net credit sales by average account receivable. Whenever you see an average on the balance sheet, it means that, remember that balance sheet is a financial statement that shows our assets liabilities and owner's equity on a specified time. For example, what you have today, what type of assets that you have today, and what are your liabilities and uh, owner's equity today. So when we see the average, we need to take the beginning of the year, so January 1st, and the end of the year, so December 31st. Then we are going to uh, get the sum of them and divide it by two because we have two different numbers. That's what we mean by average. And net credit sales is not an account that is shown on the balance sheet, but we need to go to look at the income statement. And uh, account receivable turnover is actually going to show us how many times we are collecting all of the receivables standing out in a year. So this is not a monetary amount, but it shows how many times we are collecting the receivables from customers. And in the next part, we are going to talk about uh, income statement, the basic concept and its structure. It is pretty different from balance sheet. We are going to talk about the contents so or the revenues, costs, expenses, and to well how we are calculating the income and what type of analysis that we will, basic analysis that we can use, analyze the income statement. Thanks for participating.